So on Monday, I talked to you about where I go. So on Monday, that was two days ago, I talked to you about how I use my ultrasound to find veins in the arms. And today we're gonna talk about how to find them in the non-arms, where to go when there are no arm veins. Now that is a situation that honestly rarely happens, but this happened to me on shift recently and it really made me think about some other options. Check it out. Now, if you're having a hard time, you have no veins in the forearm, no veins in the upper arm, there definitely are other options. Your other options are, for one, is an EJ. You can do an ultrasound guided EJ that works very easily. It's a very similar technique as far as your positioning to an internal jugular central venous cannulation, but you're doing it in the EJ. I would still do these at the head of the bed with the patient's kind of head here, and you are making sure that, hey, you have your ultrasound machine off in this distance, so you can just kind of look up if you need to, and you're just gonna go in a straight angle like this. The other ones is you can always look in the chest. Occasionally you'll find a great vein in the chest. You can go in the abdomen, look for the inferior epigastric veins um, that are there. I've cannulated those once or twice. They're not my favorite by far, but if you need vascular access, sometimes that's the best you can do. And you can always look in the legs. The legs, honestly, if the arms don't work, the legs are usually my next one that I go for. You can definitely go for one of the veins on the dorsal aspect of the foot. Those are usually pretty small. My go-to in the foot is usually going to be actually in the ankle. It's the posterior tibial vein. You got to be really careful with that because the posterior tibial nerve and the posterior tibial artery are really close by. It's a little bit on the tricky side, but definitely an option. So I want to mention one thing and that's differentiating artery versus vein. Now I do have a previous blog post where I talk about this a little more in depth, but in summary, I don't do color flow, I don't do pulse wave Doppler or anything like that to differentiate artery and vein because that's extra steps. I have to like press buttons on the machine and if I can get around not having to press buttons on the machine, extra work, I don't wanna do it, right? It's not unreasonable to say that you should look for compressibility, right? But if you have a hypotensive or a hypovolemic patient, that artery is gonna compress just the same as a vein would. So what I do is I actually hold pressure. So I compress and keep it there and the vein will not pulsate, the artery will pulsate. So make sure you look for pulsatility, not compressibility in differentiating artery versus vein. So in summary, probably the best way to think about how to find veins is to understand the anatomy of the veins. Where should the veins be? You got your, in the upper arm, you got your cephalic on the outside of the bicep, you got your basilic on the medial aspect, and you got your brachials that are right in the middle. And those brachials are gonna be with the median nerve and the artery. So you should have two brachial veins, one artery and a nerve. Make sure that you don't go right through that nerve or right through that artery to get to that vein, right? So that's a good idea to have kind of situational awareness, especially when you're doing those brachials. And then if all else fails, just look through the entire arm. Patients sometimes have random veins in random places that aren't really in the anatomy textbooks. Everybody's a little bit different. And then think about the chest, think about the abdomen, think about the neck, but right after the arms, I usually go straight down to the legs. Now I don't do a whole lot in the upper legs because usually those veins are fairly deep, but if you find one in the upper leg, go for it. It's a vein, just you need to get that catheter in a vein. And of course, if a patient is crashing, don't mess around trying to like find the perfect vein, just stick an IO in and you can take that out within 24 hours. You stick an IO in, that's sticking basically an IV in a giant non-compressible vein. So hopefully that was helpful. If you are watching this on the YouTube channel, please subscribe so you can get all of the videos. They're not always exactly the same as what I put on my website and on the podcast. So if you're on the website and you want to subscribe and get emails sent to you whenever there's a new post, go to the subscribe button. That's blog.5minnesota.com slash subscribe.